All right, what up? It's Alexander23, and I'm here with my beautiful good friend, Holden, a.k.a. Delwater Gap. Don't know what to call him, but he's both. I'm both. He's beautiful, and he's here. And we're going to break down uh, my song with Jeremy Zucker called Nothing's the Same, and I'm pretty excited to get into it. Oh, yeah, we're not doing Caught in the Middle. We're not doing Caught in the Middle. There's a little bit of a mix-up, but uh, it's okay. We made but it. I got, to, I got to listen to a couple of your songs and write some thoughtful questions about them, so I feel double prepared. Oh. I like that. Maybe um, we did on purpose. Yes. So I love this song. I, I, uh, I have been really interested in talking to you about what it has felt like to put out a song in COVID that feels, it feels like it really applies to this time. And I don't know if that was intentional or not, but I was listening to it. And especially watching the video, I felt like it was a really good, um, it was a really good example of just this feeling right now, right? Of like Groundhog Day, getting up every day, doing the same thing. There's something really disturbing about the video. It's so beautiful. But oh, um, Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I think like we didn't set out to, we didn't, it's not like we got together and we're like, let's write a song about like how people are feeling because of COVID and because of quarantine. Right. I think it was more just like when we were writing it, it was like definitely in the of, of quarantine where um, it was like, it was new enough where, or I guess it was old enough. Hold on. I'm going to think of the right way to say this. It was new enough where you weren't used to it, but was it wasn't old enough to the point where like you kind of found a rhythm within it, you know? Right, right. So yeah. it was in that sweet spot of just like, I'm just drowning in this monotony. And I think we didn't really realize we were writing about like, quarantine specifically until kind of the end of the songwriting process when we started to put it together and then I'm glad you liked the video the video for us was like yeah like how can we like really um exemplify and like visualize this feeling of just being so stuck in your like strange new daily routine totally yeah and it has this really sort of like subtle magical realistic feeling like it's super saturated and mm. I love how the whole video you're you're like apart, but in the same spaces. And then at the very end, there's that fill in of the last chorus. And then it, you, you're just together on the couch and you walk out together. And I love the the sprinter waiting outside. I think it's such a cool, like breaking of the fourth wall. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I love that. that was fun. I'm, as I'm sure you know, it's like, you can plan as much as you want for a music video, but like, there's always going to be like yeah. little ideas that come in like day of that you could have never had. And like, totally. um, that was that was one of those ideas where it's like, okay, like let's let's get out of here. Let's like, let's really like break this down at the end and make it feel a little bit more human and personal. Yeah, totally. I think it was such a cool way to end it. Um, yeah, I'm also interested because I know I've been following your music for a couple of years and I've always been really impressed with how much you've done alone. Um, I, you know, it's something that we even talked about like when we hung out a couple months ago, like I've personally been really struggling to finish records completely on my own because I've always been able to work with people, but I'm trying to sort of lean into that more and I find the emotional parts of that really hard. and it's something that you've always been able to do, which is really cool. Um, and I was just wondering how, how it feels for you to, to work so closely with Jeremy on this, not only just as like a writer producer, but as something that you guys did together, you know, as a joint release. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, yeah, working alone is an interesting kind of double-edged sword. I think, as I'm sure yeah. you found, like, I think the highs can be higher, you know, like when it's like, 100% came from your brain and like when you're really able to, to to capture the way you feel you know totally by yourself it can be so rewarding but I think on the same page the lows can be so much lower and stuff and I think working with Jeremy was refreshing because I think he's just as kind of like particular about his music and his lyrics and his production as I am so um and I think luckily at least on this one like our tastes really aligned and, and it actually totally. made it a lot easier um, to, to finish the song, to finish the record in a, in a way that we both found was super meaningful. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so cool. And I think that it's a, I think you guys make a lot of sense like working together because you, you both do such distinctive things, but you're both really powerful like world builders, you know? And yeah, well, thank cool you. To that. How did you, how did you first um, like connect with each other? I don't even remember how we first, first connected. We just been kind of like homies, both like in real life and on the internet for a while. And this, the day we wrote the song was the first day we were ever in the studio together. We had like hung out before and, and obviously knew each other and we're, we're friends, but it also, it was nice. It was a nice way to also just like get to know Jeremy in a really like kind of like quick and, and meaningful capacity. Yeah. Um, 
And like I, we found very quickly that we had a lot in common, both in the studio and outside of it as well. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, man, I've gotten into his music over the last couple of months. It's been cool. Super Cuts yeah. is my jam. Super Cuts is so good. Yeah, all of that song. So good. I think he like, he just, I, I think for me, like the number one factor in, in whether I like someone's music, regardless of the genre or any other, any other thing. And like, this is, I think the reason why I like your music so much is just believability. And it's like, like, regardless of like what kind of music you're making, like, as long as I believe you, like, I like love it and I will always be attached to it. And that's how I felt when I first heard like high tops. And obviously like if you've been listening to every song you've ever made ever since then. Um, and I feel the same way about Jeremy's music and I feel the same way about like bad bunny, you know, like I don't like my Spanish right. is not good enough to understand every single word, but like I literally right. believe every single like syllable that comes out of his mouth, you know, it feels like very right. authentic. So um, I think that's what drew me to Jeremy immediately. And I, I think in the studio, we were just both trying to make something that felt believable to, to both of us. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think, I think it's a really concise way of saying something that, I mean, fandom is so interesting, especially right now, you know, almost like disconnected. And mm. I think I agree very much so. And it's it's really cool too. And I've, I've sort of found this with you, like knowing someone's music a little better than you know them and then becoming friends with them. And it like really reaffirms liking their music, you know, in that way. Cause you're like, oh fuck, this yeah. is really just an extension. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Because it's nice to be proven right. You know, like I knew your music before I really, before we were really good friends. And like, it was nice to then get to know you and be like, oh, I was right. Like, this is who he is. And this is how he feels. You know, like, yeah. it's a very cool feeling. Yeah, it's super cool. So I wanted to, I really like the lyrics to this song. Um, and I think that personally, I really connect with just, you guys talk a bit about like getting bitter, right? And just like burning out and some of the magic being gone. And I love the line about being at the grocery store. Like that's such, when I first moved to New York, I just remember that the grocery store being the place where I had my like biggest ex existential breakdowns. Cause yeah. there was a moment where I was like, oh my God, I'm just living, like I'm here. Yeah. You know, like yeah, I'm buying groceries to fuel totally. myself, you know? And like, I'm an adult, I'm out here. Um, and I was just wondering like, if you can speak to like maybe some of those, some of those themes and like, how they've applied to you over the last year like have, how, how do you feel like your relationship with like bitterness or excitement has changed around music or just around life over the last year yeah totally I think if for me it, it ebbs and flows and it, it all comes in waves and I think I, what I like most about the grocery line specifically is like I think that is like so applicable to 2020 being that like the grocery store was like the only place I could go you know like I think a lot of people were like regularly going you know that was outside of their house and like, I, I agree, I've definitely had some just crazy thoughts in the grocery store. There's something about like doing something that if you don't do, you will not continue to live that like right. really just like shake you, I think, to your core. And I think totally. especially in the times that we've been living in, like it was especially harsh. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I, I think I have a fairly like complicated relationship with music. There are days where I feel like I love it more than ever. And there are days where I feel like all of the original magic that made me fall in love with it are just completely gone. And I, th yeah. I'm, I think I'm slowly getting better at kind of tempering those storms and, and uh, you know, keeping in mind that like, regardless if one day I just am not feeling it, that that feeling is not going to last forever. Totally. Yeah. And what, what, what do you think has like helped you like close the gaps a little bit? Yeah, I think for me, it's, uh, I mean, like, I'm sure you feel this too, just like when music becomes your career, like there's a certain pressure that obviously comes with that. And for me, it's been finding other ways to be and stay creative outside of music so that I don't rely fully on this like kind of magical sacred thing to like fulfill me all the time. Because like, I think songwriting in, in general is like 50% skill, 50% magic, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's, catching not, yeah. it's just not up to you all the time, whether you're going to be able to do it or not. So, I mean, like me and you have been like embroidering and sewing all the time and like <laughs> that's something that's a way of like being creative that like I feel like we have like way more control over and, and that's been such a nice like creative outlet and release um right. and way of like balancing kind of the inconsistency of being an artist right well you think you have control and then you know you pull out the you pull out the embroidery hoop and and your design's completely off center <laughs> And that's part of it, man. Move on to the next. And then you forget everything you knew about embroidery. Yeah, <laughs> it's all out the window. Yeah, dude. Well, um, 
I was just wondering, I mean, you sort of started already, but what are you excited about, what are you excited about outside of music uh, other than, other than embroidery? Like what's, what's, what's keeping your brain moving these days? For me, I, I got to exercise. If I'm not like exercising and like sweating, like I just start to, to feel like extremely overwhelmed by like the smallest stuff. So, and when I am exercising, I, I feel totally fine usually. So yeah. I've been really focusing on like staying consistent with that. Um, and like, I think exercise is similar to like therapy in that like, it's important to do it even when you feel good, you know, like, so totally. just like, totally. it's like Super wise. Yeah. trying to stay ahead of myself here, you know, and like, I've been in a really good place the last couple of months and, and I would prefer to keep it that way. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it, man. It's so real. I, I changed my screensaver the last like two months to, uh, you're okay. Just going around. Yeah, I really Dude, I love that. that. It's so it's so true. It's crazy, yeah. what, like just like fifteen seconds of getting your heart rate can do just to your general mood and to yeah. the, the rest of your day. So, totally. Well, That's I have cool. one more question. Hey, man. Um, I I I love your EP. I listen to the whole thing, Thanks. and I love the name. Oh no, not again. I think it's funny and cool. And like, Thanks. I don't. I I have what it means to me. I'm sure it means something to you. Mm -hmm. I was wondering. Um. I know often EPs are just like a collection of singles and sometimes they have a theme or a through line. And I was wondering for you, just what does this collection represent and how does this song with Jeremy fit in to that collection? Um, so when I first started writing like what eventually became this EP, I did not like have making the EP in mind, kind of like you were saying okay. before. Um, and then as I kept writing the songs throughout this past year, it kind of became like increasingly clear to me that I, it felt important to like, that they should live together in some capacity. And it felt, and it also felt like they were organically kind of building to something that regardless of whether that was my original intention, it was kind of something that was subconsciously happening. Um, and so, yeah, like I, I named it Oh No Not Again, because it felt like this EP, all the songs on it kind of like were building towards one kind of complete cycle of a relationship and, mm. and it's a cycle that now at this point in my life I've gone through a few times and it's like you don't even realize that you're in it or that it's about to end before it just ends and then you're kind of just left saying like oh no not again like this happened again and yeah you know, I didn't even believe I didn't realize it was happening um and yeah I think like the, the song with Jeremy was is an important part of that relationship where you start to just like get too stuck in your routine with someone or with your life and and that can like be super detrimental to like your you know obviously platonic but also romantic relationship with someone yeah 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 totally i think it's brilliant and it's so real you don't really see history repeating itself for yourself until you're like a little bit past it and you're like wow I, you know that's happened yeah totally yeah i mean like perspective isn't something that you you is granted right away you know you kind of have to earn it with yeah. time yeah totally i think it's brilliant Okay, so I actually have one more question. Um, Please, yeah. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about your relationship with soup, because mm. I've gotten really into soup during quarantine. I got an Instant Pot, and I've been making soup. Dude. And I, I really enjoy, I think you're so fucking funny on Instagram, and I just, I remember seeing you and your dad texting about soup. Mm. Well, yeah. Your dad being like a diehard soup guy. First of all, and thank you. I don't yeah. know if you have anything to say about soup. I was raised in a soup <laughs> household. You know, like, I think soup is just is brilliant and extraordinarily underappreciated. I agree, uh, I agree. World. It's, it's so good and it's so versatile. Like it can be- Is it a meal? It can be the meal. It I, think it's a, I think it can be a meal. Oh, it certainly can be, especially depending on the soup. If you do a bowl of chowder, you're gonna be more full than like a rack of ribs. Like that'll just completely fuck you up. Like <laughs> no questions asked, you know? Do you make soup? Um, I have made soup. I'm more of just an aficionado, more just something, you know, yeah. I like to, enjoy it you know it's kind of like how i feel about like movies where like right. i'm like i don't know how you do this but i, I want to make movies but you yeah, want to enjoy it like music like obviously is my favorite thing in the world but there is a aspect of the magic that has been lost as i've seen more and more under the hood and totally. i want to keep soup sacred you know i want soup to just be something i can really enjoy and talk about and you know and it's it has a special place in my heart you know for generations yeah. of my family and uh yeah. Well, if you do want an instant pot, you can use code Holden at checkout for uh, <laughs> 20 bucks. I was kidding. Don't do that. Um, yeah. I mean, do you have anything else that you want to add about your song or about life? I don't think so. I think we covered a lot of ground here, man. I really appreciate you taking the time. And um, of course. 
It was uh, an honor to have uh, someone who I think is so good at, at this whole songwriting thing and, and process to, to help me break down one of these songs. So, um, yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you.